All right, so today in this video, I am attempting to grow sugar baby watermelons with just under 100 watts of light in total with these light strips. And these are QG LED light strips. Uh, link will be in the description below if you wanna know more about these. Uh, I did a review video for that. You can click that link to watch that video. So I, the seedlings here are just getting started. I got the lights super close to them because I'm trying to keep them short so they don't uh, elongate. After that, I'm gonna raise the lights by a few inches. But uh, this is gonna be in this container here. And this container is, I believe, a six gallon. So this is a Aeroponics DWC hybrid. I did another video on how to make this. Uh, link will also be in the description below if you're interested in that too. All right, we are now about three weeks after these have sprouted. And you can see here that I have them in these yogurt containers. You know, I don't want to mix up six gallons of a solution just for a seedling mix. So you start them in little pots in there. These are just yogurt containers. Uh, but you can see the roots are very white and very healthy looking on uh, the ones on the left here. So what I'm going to do is take these out now. And I'm going to fill this container up with six gallons of the aggressive mix, aggressive vegetative mix, and that's with the general hydroponics. So we'll come back here in a second and uh, get this started. Okay, I got the container filled up. See everything's running very nicely. Nice healthy roots. Uh, you can see on the other side there, there's light coming through. So what I'm probably gonna do is wrap this container with something that uh, doesn't let the light come in because I don't want any algae growing in there. All right, we're about uh, two weeks later now. You can see we got a lot more growth going on. And I just noticed today we got a male flower that has opened. And you can tell it is a male flower because there is no uh, watermelon, or I would say a, no mini watermelon growing underneath it. And you can see that the pollen sacs are quite yellow looking. And then I found over here, I have a female flower. And I can tell that's a female flower. You see a little bulb there, that's a mini watermelon starting. And if you look inside the flower, it doesn't have any pollen sacs. It, it kind of looks similar to the male flower, except uh, there's no yellow powder on there, on the inside there. So what I'm going to do is take the male flower and pollinate the female. All right, so I'm just going to take the male and I'm just going to pull it right off. All right, so it's important to do this uh, as soon as you see the female flower open because they only stay open for about six hours. Um, however, you can go in there later and if the flower is a little bit closed, you can always take the flower and kind of open it again and then take a male flower and still pollinate it. But after the petals are closed, if this was outside, then the insects wouldn't be able to get back into it. So if you are growing watermelons outside um, and you wanna try to get more melons and make sure to pollinate, you can do it manually that way. Okay, quick update here. Uh, the melon that I pollinated, you can see is growing right there. And I've increased the lighting hours. But I really just wanted to make this update real quick here because I'm pumping out this solution here because it's consumed about four gallons of water and I need to change the ratio uh, for this um, mix. And I'm pumping it into this bucket here and if I smell this water, this solution here, it smells like watermelon. And that's actually one thing I've noticed when I grow watermelon sprouts is that if I'm growing them in like soil or something like that and I go to transplant them to outside if they're doing really well, the you can actually smell the roots when you take them out of the starter pots and it smells exactly like watermelon, like really, really fresh, sweet watermelon. And that's kind of what this solution smells like from the roots that's growing in here. So that's a good sign. It doesn't smell bad at all, which means that it's healthy, uh, except the fact that it's consumed most of the nutrients available in this and you need to add some more. All right, as you can see here, uh, we are a little while later now. I don't know exactly how long it is since the start of this. I'll put it up on the video here. Um, but as you can see, 
there's quite a bit of growth. I've actually trimmed out a little bit along the outside edges of this and the back uh, quite a few times just to keep everything under the light. And then over here, you can see one of the flowers I pollinated, a decent sized sugar baby melon growing there. And then over here on this side, there's two small ones. I don't expect these to get very big. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna trim out pretty much all of this except for the one plant that is producing this. And then we'll come back when it's done growing. I just wanna try to get as big as I can get it without anything else thieving all the nutrients. And then we're gonna see how big it gets and then we're gonna taste it. Okay, so we're back. It is one month after the last segment you just watched. And you can see that the plants are very healthy. And this actually, they grew back a lot since I trimmed them out. Um, I trimmed out a lot. There was actually hardly anything growing in here just except for the vines that were from this one plant growing that melon and this one plant growing that melon over there. I had this cover on this seed starting tray and I have a heat mat under there. The reason I was doing that is because I was trying to simulate summer heat. In my basement, it's only about 72 degrees all you know the entire summer. So uh, I wanted to get it a little bit warmer to kind of help ripen it. And it, I think it actually worked pretty well, at least from the outside from what I'm observing here. So down here, this little brown leaf, that's the spoon leaf, that's dried up. And the tendril down there, uh, it's still a little green, but it's actually dried up pretty well now. Uh, the underside of this melon is, is green just like the rest of it, just because it hasn't flattened out and it's kind of been exposed to light. So you can't really tell from the bottom of it. Um, as far as how it sounds, I mean, it's a small melon, so it's really hard to tell. I wouldn't ever check the ripeness of a melon by thumping on it anyways. Uh, so this melon over here, it's quite a bit smaller. You can see I can fit my hand around it. I don't expect this to be edible. Uh, but this one, however, is not really that small. Here's my hand. You can see that. It's not really all that small. It's actually about 50% of the normal size of a normal sugar baby watermelon that you grow, out, grow outside. And even if you grow these outside, this wouldn't be an uncommon size. You might get melons this size outside. So it's fairly impressive that these lights actually grew these two plants. And what's even more impressive is this is only 96 watts worth of light spread over the area here. So that just goes to show that it's not all about the wattage you pump into a light. Uh, it's, it's about efficiently delivering that light in proximity and spectral quality. Uh, that's exactly how I grew this. And I, you know, years ago, it would be almost unheard of to even attempt growing watermelons under less than 100 watts worth of light. That would be just blasphemy. <laughs> so we're gonna cut this off the vine now. We're gonna go weigh it and then we're gonna taste it. All right, so real quick here, here's the small one. I'll cut this open and kind of see what it looks like. Hmm. Well, that's actually pretty surprising. I'm actually surprised this little one is ripe. Let's have a smell here. Uh, yeah, it smells edible. All right, well, we'll put this one in the fridge and then we'll cut open the other one. All right, so here's the larger one. This one weighed 3.1 pounds, as you can see in the picture on the screen here. So let's cut this open and see what it looks like. Oh, that kind of went really easy. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is uh, nice and ripe. The rind is nice and thin. Um, the color is good, and the color in a camera you're probably seeing here is a little bit yellow looking. That's just the white balance. And it smells really sweet. Let's have a little bit of a taste of it. It's a little warm, but that's just because it was in that tray. So I'm gonna cut a little piece out of this, and we're gonna have a quick taste, and I'll let you guys know what I think. Obviously, it's not gonna taste as good as it will cold, um, but we're gonna have a little bit of cold watermelon later, so let's have a taste of this. Oh wow, that is really sweet. That's actually really impressive. I did not expect it to be that good. 
And if it tastes that sweet when it's still warm, it's gonna taste so much better when it's cold. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave comments below if you have any questions. Um, if anyone was wondering, I ran the lights for 19 hours throughout most of the process and then I reduced it to 12 hours uh, for the past uh, few weeks only. Uh, not that that was necessary, it's just something I was trying out. So that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.